Uh, hi, my name is uh, Harris Feinberg. I'm the CEO of IonPath. Um, I, I think something that we've really seen in the marketplace is that the number of markers ends up potentially being important. I mean, I think though none of us really know, right? Um, but what we feel is definitively important is that, uh, or necessary, is that after you have one or two markers, the traditional tools of analysis uh, for cell for images, which are two eyes and a brain, start to really break down, right? And so what we've seen is using more markers to enable higher order segmentation that's actually um, going to be robust across a variety of tissue types, um, and to be able to inspect tissue quality ends up being really, really important. So even though you may have a diagnostic that's only three or four markers, how do you interpret a four marker diagnostic where you're looking at a quantitative um, readout, right? I mean, your the pathology is generally a binary tool set. Is it there, is it not, or is it one, two, or three? Um, and so that's the place where we see adding segmentation markers, adding quantitation markers, uh, ends up taking pathology and general um, diagnosis from a place of a qualitative analysis into quantitative analysis. And it's very hard for me to understand how you would do that without, you know, eight or ten markers in order to inform those things because we've been trying for a long time and we haven't been able to do it. Thank you. So do we have any pathologists in the audience who can comment on that pathology question? Because it's, it's something that's important. I'm not a pathologist, but I have a comment based on the, yeah, the, the importance of quantification and the Everybody's talking about numbers, and this is a spatial multiplexing conference. So one thing that's also not very inherent right now is how to standardize the quantification of the spatial relationships between these multiplexed uh, phenotypes, profiles, be it at the cell level or the pixel level or whatever. Um, and you may need two to 300 markers to look at the cellular functional heterogeneity in a specific system, but maybe when you have that spatial information as well, you actually fewer. Um, yeah, it comes a bit, again, down to how many markers for the right question, but this is really unexplored, I feel, at the moment, is also when you have the spatial information as well, how that's going to impact um, what you need to take forward to get the informative information. Just, um, to add one more aspect here, and Harris already mentioned that, if you start to talk about quantitative analyses, then just the way how in different hospitals tissues are processed differently may lead to different quantitative outcomes. And all of this has to be standardized. I mean, different hospitals use different antibodies against the same targets to perform patient classification and decide on treatment, and the overlap has good overlap, but not perfect overlap. So it's, it's a big can of worms that if you want to do accurate quantification on patient samples, want to do this across many sites, it's a real challenge. And many things have to be fixed before an antibody will even touch the tissue. Just another comment. I think it would be uh, interesting, again, going back to the AML stadium uh, mutations, it would be interesting in terms of multiplexing to have the ability to measure RNA, protein, mutations simultaneously in a tissue. So there are different ways you can go multiplex, like this or like this. So. I have so many, so many questions in my mind when I go back to my own presentation. So what about the TCR repertoire in the bone marrow infiltrating T cells? Is there a way we can measure this on top of, of proteins, on top of TP53 mutations? Oh no, it's, it's a very long list. So I think there are many ways we can go very high multiplex. I personally also think that we're still very much stuck in this molecular biology thinking of measuring more molecules is better. For sure, to some extent, this is true, but there are many properties of biological specimens that are not just quantified by molecules, right? So shapes and, and tensions by physical properties. Um, and, and, and so I think there's a lot to be gained there, and I think you can also go lower in plex if you go higher in resolution and in information you extract from the image you're collecting. I think there is a lot to be gained as well. So, um, I'm managing your nystological facility in the academia and what I see is that people are asking for more and more markers, but they first don't know how to analyze, they don't have a good question and they don't know all the all the constraint that you can have just to manage three antibodies together. 
So it's nice to come from the flow cytometry. The antibodies are working, they're directly labeled, and then you go to the tissue and it's another world. And I think people should be educated how to handle the tissues and they should be educated as well uh, uh, to, to be bioinformaticians. And, and this is really important for me because histology is an old technique. And everybody thinks it's for all technician in a corner, but it's, it can be really powerful and it's becoming more and more powerful due to the multiplexing. But we should really be careful with the basic stuff and how we handle it. It, it, it is the responsibility to support and to teach people. And, but they should not pay only services, meaning you should not go with the tissue and say, do everything. You should learn how to do it. Because you should understand all the artifacts that can go into a tissue. So, and that's important. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, you know, we, we empower people to, um, to understand their own data, because ultimately we can help, we can do things for people, but they're the ones that go and have to talk about the data and defend it. So, it's a good analogy to use with flow. I would use flow as well. But I guess one of the things to kind of temper that is that you know, flow cytometry has pretty much been around since, what, early 60s. And we still can't agree, for example, on how to QC our machines, right? Some people say it's got to be beads. Some people say, no, it's got to be cells. And some people say, no, it's got to be photons. So it's difficult. Because the other thing we think about as well, you know, think about how tissues prepped and that kind of side of things, think about the analysis. I worry a lot about the measurement process. That's what keeps me awake at night. And, one of the things that we struggle with, I guess, with IMC is, you know, how do we quality control that measurement when we're running lots of tissue, lots of sections, when we're dealing with a detector that becomes tired over time? Um, you know, I think kind of standards are very important as well, you know, thinking very much from a clinical perspective, your reagents, your processes, but also the actual measurement process has to be really controlled as well. So I don't know how you do that on an image, but I guess there are ways. You know, a lot of these technologies are still very early, so people are not applying it widespread. They're not, they're not there aren't instruments yet in multiple sites, which of course when you start doing multi-site clinical studies, you have to somehow be able to compare not just between patients on the same instrument, but even across sites, which makes it even more complicated. And then with tissues, I mean, I know some companies are uh, offering some solutions in how to standardize background subtraction in the, these images on tissues. Um, and I think it's just gonna need a bit more time and people doing this a bit more before we have an idea of how quantitative we can, how quantitative some of this data really is. And I think even within the companies, if they're honest with themselves, their image analysis is not at the level that perhaps is applied um, in basic research. And, um, that means that even though we're getting this quantitative inf information on the levels of, of, in a multiplexed way, whether we can really say more than positive or negative in a reliable fashion, I, I'm still not sure that we're completely there yet in, in terms of then being able to do clinical application. <laughs>